lying in the Antarctic Circle that rings the southern part of the globe. Antarctica is the fifth largest continent. Its size varies through the seasons, as expanding sea ice along the coast nearly doubles the continent's size in the winter. Almost all of Antarctica is covered with ice. Less than half of a percent of the vast wilderness is ice-free. The continent is divided into two regions, known as East and West Antarctica. East Antarctica makes up two-thirds of the continent and is about the size of Australia. Ice in this part of the continent averages 1.2 miles or 2 kilometers thick. West Antarctica, on the other hand, is a series of frozen islands stretching toward the southern tip of South America, forming an extension of the Andes Mountains. The two regions are separated by the Transantarctic Mountains, a range that stretches across the continent and is sometimes completely covered by ice. Despite all its ice, Antarctica is classified as a desert because so little moisture falls from the sky. The inner regions of the continent receive an average of 2 inches or 50 millimeters of precipitation, primarily in the form of snow, each year. To put that in perspective, much of the Sahara Desert gets twice as much rain each year. Antarctica's wildlife is diverse and unique. It is the only continent on Earth that has no terrestrial mammals, but is home to a range of marine wildlife and birds, including penguins. Despite the diversity of wildlife in Antarctica, there is one striking absence. There are no land predators. Unlike many other ecosystems on Earth, there are no mammalian predators in Antarctica, such as wolves, big cats, or bears. This is a surprising fact, given that predators play a vital role in regulating populations of prey animals in most other ecosystems. So, why are there no land predators in Antarctica? Before we answer this question, Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. With that being said, let's begin. Several factors contribute to the lack of land predators in Antarctica. One of the primary reasons for the lack of land predators is the severe weather conditions of the continent. Antarctica is covered in a massive ice sheet, and temperatures can drop as low as minus 80 degrees Celsius or negative 12 degrees Fahrenheit in some places. This harsh environment makes it difficult for land predators to find enough food and shelter to survive. Without a stable food source, predators cannot establish themselves in the ecosystem. Another reason for the lack of land predators is the continent's isolation. The closest landmass to Antarctica is South America, which is over 600 miles or 1,000 kilometers away. The Southern Ocean acts as a natural barrier, preventing many animals from migrating to the continent. This isolation means that the ecosystem of Antarctica has developed independently from other regions, and there are few opportunities for new species to establish themselves on the continent. Antarctica's unique ecosystem has allowed the evolution of animals that have adapted to survive in the extreme conditions. For example, penguins have developed the ability to swim long distances in search of food and huddle together in large groups to conserve heat. Weddell seals have specialized teeth that allow them to create breathing holes in the ice to catch fish. The absence of land predators has allowed these and other animals to evolve and occupy ecological niches that would otherwise be filled by predators. While Antarctica may not have any land predators, it is home to several species of aquatic and semi-aquatic predators. These creatures have adapted to the extreme conditions of the Southern Ocean and they play a vital role in regulating the populations of other marine animals. One of the most well-known aquatic predators in Antarctica is the orca. Orcas are highly social and intelligent members of the dolphin family Delphinidae. They are sometimes referred to as killer whales, though this name has somewhat fallen out of fashion due to inaccurately characterizing orcas as ferocious predators. They are common in Antarctic waters, with a population estimated at about 70,000. Another common predator in the waters around Antarctica is the leopard seal. These creatures are the second largest seal species in Antarctica, and they are known for their aggressive hunting behavior. Leopard seals feed on a variety of prey, including fish, krill, squid, and penguins. They are known for their powerful jaws and sharp teeth, which they use to catch and kill their prey. Several species of seal can also be found in the waters around Antarctica, including the Weddell seal the crab-eater seal, and the fur seal. These creatures are semi-aquatic, meaning that they spend part of their time on land and part of their time in the water. 
Seals are important predators in Antarctica, and they play a vital role in regulating the populations of fish and other marine animals. In addition to these large predators, Antarctica is also home to a variety of smaller predators, such as the Antarctic krill. Krill are tiny crustaceans that are found in the waters around Antarctica, and they are a vital source of food for many other animals in the ecosystem. Despite their small size, krill is considered to be one of the most important species in the Southern Ocean. So, while there may not be any land predators in Antarctica, the waters around the continent are teeming with life, including several species of aquatic and semi-aquatic predators. These creatures are perfectly adapted to the extreme conditions of the Southern Ocean, and they play a crucial role in the delicate balance of life in Antarctica. Despite the lack of land predators in Antarctica, there have been proposals to introduce them to the continent. The idea of introducing land predators to Antarctica is controversial, and there are concerns about the potential impact on the existing ecosystem. One of the potential candidates for introduction is the polar bear, which is a top predator in the Arctic. While it's true that the Antarctic has an appropriate climate for polar bears and food for them to eat, relocating the bears south is far from foolproof. For one, Antarctica is largely lacking in land predators similar to the polar bear. Without these type of predators, penguins and seals have evolved to be rather confident when hanging out above the water. In fact, when the first people arrived in Antarctica, they noted how the penguins' fearless curiosity made them a remarkably easy food source for shipwrecked explorers. Polar bears in Antarctica would be considered an invasive species. They would devastate penguin populations, as penguins are easily caught therefore eliminating a long-term food source. Also, the migration patterns of many Antarctica animals would deny polar bears a year-round food source. It is unlikely that all habitat and nutritional needs for polar bears would be met through all seasons. A major problem could be the potential pathogens of the disease, which could either be introduced from the Arctic by the bears or be present in Antarctica and threaten the bears. So the food source of the bears could die off from disease, while the polar bears themselves could die off from disease. The darkest possible scenario for this hypothetical move would be for polar bears to destroy all the species they can feed on and then become extinct due to a lack of food. Another potential candidate for introduction is the Arctic fox. The introduction of Arctic foxes to Antarctica could have similar negative effects as they could prey on animals that have no experience or defenses against this type of predator. Aside from ecological risks, introducing land predators to Antarctica could also pose a logistical challenge. The harsh weather conditions, isolation, and lack of infrastructure would make it difficult to transport and maintain any introduced animals, let alone monitor their impact on the ecosystem. Another concern is the potential impact of land predators on human activities in Antarctica. Tourism and research activities are important to the economy of the continent, and the presence of predators could pose a safety risk to humans. Finally, there are ethical concerns about introducing non-native species to Antarctica. The continent has been largely untouched by human activity, and there are arguments that we should not be tampering with the natural balance of the ecosystem. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.